We're excited for this one. The rewatchables. Here's why we did it. We did it because we love movies at The Ringer. We love rewatching movies. We love talking about the same movies that we just talked about six weeks ago. I'm here with Chris Ryan and Amanda Dobbins from The Ringer. What's there's, up, Bill? Hello. There's no better first episode of The Rewatchables than A Few Good Men. A lot of people don't know this, but Al Pacino is supposed to be Doc Brown. <laughs> Chris, Chris, you have you have that right. You have the screen test. Of no, that? yeah. So uh, let me let me just uh, let me just bring it up. It's it's a it's a, a weird file I got. From, he said uh, he was going to play it a line. lot like the guy from Heat, and that's I think why they decided bad idea. If we could uh, somehow harness this lightning, channel it into the flux capacitor, it just might work. Next Saturday night, we're sending you back. To the future! <laughs> so he dialed it up too much and it just didn't work. The dating scene in Boston ages well because this is realistic. Like, hey, who are you dating? And you go to Claire. Well, He's a bank robber. <laughs> <laughs> but his truck is fucking pissed He's got an avalanche. And, you know, he's in great shape. Dan Gallagher <laughs> fed the dog spaghetti and meatballs oh, for yeah. dinner. Listen. That is like, hey, can you have diarrhea for four this days is, in our house? This was an outrage. Because <laughs> <do> he... <laughs> Adam and I paused the movie and talked about this. <laughs> spaghetti and meatballs. Who does that? I think you could make the argument that no one has ever fucking 360 tomahawked a line reading like Russell Crowe does on my command, Unleash Hell. Yeah. yeah. I, right now, if Russell Crowe walked into my door and said, on my command, Unleash Hell, I would go play free safety for the Chargers. <laughs> <laughs> The dancing, I'll never understand for the rest of my life. Even by 1985 standards, when the wheels were just off in 90 different ways, what made everybody go, you nailed it, Emilio. <laughs> That's a print. I yeah. want to see the other takes. That, I was thinking the same that thing. That dancing, that was the one. When you did the Palma Horse on the library <laughs> shows, that was it. You nailed it. Hey, uh, we're, uh, I need you to come to Havana with me. It's like, great, I have the perfect turtleneck for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put on this cool turtleneck. It's very inconspicuous so that when I'm lurking around fucking hospitals, yeah. no one will notice me. Craig, would you believe in 1982 they made a movie? These two guys worked at a morgue. They ended up taking over, uh, becoming pimps for a bunch of prostitutes and running it out of the morgue. That that was a, a very successful 1982 comedy. It sounds like a rewatchables we would do. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very loaded. Good, that's a good answer. The shower scene. Yeah, I have been preparing for this since you said we're doing a day of rewatchables. <laughs> Based on the first lady's reaction, mm -hmm. was Dave more or less healthy than President Mitchell? I just, I want to kill myself. <laughs> His lat pull down form is the worst fucking form Correct. in the history of lat pull downs, okay? It's so incredibly bad it was as if the contest was who here on set wants to do this thing where it looks like you're the least familiar with this exercise and Modine's like I got it here's the thing is I get to the end of that scene every time a man has been kicked to death basically 
And I just always end it by being like, God, maybe I should buy a bar. <laughs> Just so looks you can like, murder your enemies? No, it just <laughs> looks like an amazing place to hang out. I just want to be able to be like, no, no, no. Drinks are on the yeah, house. Drinks are on the house. So the budget of this movie is a little tight. They only had two pizzas. <laughs> In the props department had to reuse the same two pizzas. And John Turturro famously was taught how to cut pizza. When you're cutting with a pizza roller, you need to dig into the crust, down and through. And in the movie, if you watch the movie, you can see him just kind of like airing it and not going through it because they couldn't cut up the two pizzas that they had. Here's the thing. I'm a content guy. So I I immediately start a pirate radio station and I become the Colin Coward of Penal Comedy Matt. And I'm like, coming up next. Are we sure the brain isn't the brains behind the Duke? First, a word from Chock Full of Nuts. But you guys I, don't think this is a Christmas movie, right? I definitely do. Of this, course this it is. captures the anxiety of traveling during Christmas. It ends with a Christmas song. You guys are ridiculous. A Christmas movie is like National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, and every single scene had. If what you more don't have fucking Christmas, Christmas do you need in this movie for this it to be? This movie could have happened on July third. It's like they literally talk happens. about how it's Christmas week, like the entire fucking yeah, movie. Fuck, they're shoehorning it in. I could watch that on YouTube for like, what, three hours? Those two kind of staring at them, Wahlberg with that, who's this fucking guy? I look at his face and Leo just under attack, not even knowing why. All he's doing is like trying to get a job. You have different accents? <laughs> you did, you little fucking sneak. <laughs> you have different accents? You did, didn't you, you little fucking snake? You were like different people. I haven't even said the words international and mobile. <laughs> Dan Corleone. International and mobile. I, you know what? I hate agreeing. It's a very complicated business. I don't know. Like, you should have had a cigarette. <laughs> I really should have. You're selfish. And you're right. a bad mother. And you're a bad grandmother. And you're a bad <laughs> fiance. And you're a bad 60 hour girlfriend. You right. sucked in all the parts of your life. We haven't talked about this one yet. Because she's got a great ass! <laughs> and you got your head all the way up it! The, the underrated part is that the next line is, when I think about a woman's ass, something just comes out of me. <laughs> so in the director's commentary, Michael Mann said, Al Pacino had lived this whole thing. Uh -huh. And Hank Azaria, Hank Azaria looks exasperated and shocked because he doesn't know what the fuck is He's going like, on. He's like, Jesus Christ. He's yeah. like, I think he actually says that. He's like, is this guy going to shoot me? Uh, you can get her walking your doggy. <laughs> Downey and Clooney? Too old. Yeah, I think Clooney's too old. It's Look, like Clooney's six years. Pitch old. an idea for Christ's sake. Yeah, Christ. I'm everything down. I, I said Matt and Ben. I laughed at Gerard and Jake. I, I mean, I, I did. The part of the reason why this movie is a masterpiece is because he got it. Chris is impersonating the internet. He's offering no ideas and just shitting on everyone else's. <laughs> Thank you. Are we sure Red was good? 
Red, overrated. Coming up next. <laughs> Coming up next on First Take. I'll tell you why Red <laughs> is actually the bad guy in Shawshank. No, 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 no. <laughs> Coming I, up next. I didn't come on here to have this whole thing ruined in my mind. Why the warden is misunderstood. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't top that. <laughs> oh my god. I think Sorry. Mallory just won the movie. I'm gonna have to put a disclaimer when I do the reads at the top I'm of the sorry. podcast. Yeah, like anyone's gonna advertise on this podcast. I think it might be the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. I, I think that I, I I think it's the fun maybe the funniest scene in movie history. It is what he's trying to do by colliding goofball shit with high level Zen thinking and exploring like history and the wider scope of the world with this moronic criminal character is surprisingly and weirdly sophisticated while also being totally legible to a six year old. And it's just, it's the, it's the genius of Bill Murray in two minutes. I just want to mention that in early in this film, mm-hmm. Bond has sex with a woman in Turkey. Yeah. By the beach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the next shot is he is wearing khakis in bed. And I think that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> this movie comes the closest to what I feel like going to heaven or hell is actually like out of any movie I've seen. I think it's really this simple. <laughs> this might I think be the you dumbest die. thing I've ever heard on the rewind. I yes! think you die. You die and either there's a light or just creepy guys and bad special effects and shadows come out and they pull you away as your eyes bulge and you just go down in the depths of hell. And it's one or the other, and that's what happens. You think Ghost sums up the afterlife the best? Yes, the best of any movie I've seen. I just think it's that simple. It's like there's a light or there's creepy guys and shadows and you're just done. And that's it. It's that easy. <laughs>